Hello, and welcome to this video. This should be the last one in the series. We're looking at applications of power series, being able to represent functions as power series. And um, we'll just have uh, three examples in this video. First off, here's our example that we're looking for. We have a function that we can't find the antiderivative of using normal techniques. Integration by parts, partial fractions, use of, none of that's going to work for this one. But we still might be interested in knowing the area under the curve. You see, what happens here is that once you find this power series, it turns out that this is what the actual computer is going to be using when you try to ask it to integrate this function, maybe between, you know, um, you know, some a and b maybe on some actual interval right here we're just looking for the antiderivative so we're looking for a generic function that is represented by the antiderivative of 5 over 2 plus x cubed we're looking for the power series on that on that generic function maybe i should call it h of x or something h of x is this integral h of x is the antiderivative of 5 over 2 plus x cubed. It's the function that has this guy as its derivative. Okay, let's just look at the actual function on the inside, right? So the, there's a 5 in the numerator and there's a 2 in the denominator. And then there's an x cubed. And so what we want to do is recognize the fact that we know for sure that in our library of functions that we know the power series for, we have four different functions. Our job, make sure that this guy looks like one of those algebraically and then use that to find this guy's power series. So it looks a lot like your 1 over 1 minus x but there's not a one in the numerator, there's not a one in the denominator, and there's not a minus after the one. <laughs> Those are the three things you have to go get in that order. The one in the numerator, let's go get that. How are we gonna get it? Factor out the five. The one in the denominator, that's the second guy you go get. How do you get that? Factor out the two. Now, the second term is x cubed, and there's no 2 in that. So the consequence of factoring out 2 is you have to put a 2 underneath. You're doing great. The third guy that you go for in the 1 over 1 minus x series is the minus. And then you're good. You can stop at that point. What you have is a plus. So plus is just minus a negative. So let's represent it like that. 5 halves on the outside. 1 over 1 minus a negative x cubed over 2. We write it like this on purpose because in our first series that we found the function that it represents, first power series, we found the function that it represents the geometric series. It has a certain format to it. 1 over 1 minus anything will be represented as a power series with x, that anything raised to the nth power. It'll be converted as long as that anything absolute value is less than one. And so we then can take all the X's out and put in X cubed over two negative. Whatever's after the minus in one over one minus block. So instead of, um, so we keep the five halves outside. Instead of one plus X, we have one plus a negative X cubed over two. Instead of plus X squared, we have a, negative x cubed over 2 squared instead of x cubed negative x cubed over 2 cubed in the summation instead of x to the n negative x cubed over 2 to the n but don't forget the 5 halves is out there as well so we're doing great we can now represent the function that's on the inside of the integral don't forget we haven't integrated yet so now we're going to integrate term by term we're going to integrate our function. We're going to integrate our individual first four non-zero terms. And we are going to integrate our summation. That's legal. Okay. In the summation of a, a integral of a sum, it's the sum of the integrals. 
with the negative one half to the end, you can pull that um, not out of the summation, but but out of the integral and focus the integral being just on the x term. Um, the the negative x cubed over two can be broken down to three separate terms. It's negative one to the n. It is then divided by two to the n, and then it is x to the three n. And I've combined those two guys, negative one over two, the whole thing to the n, and then I have x to the three n. I'm going to integrate that. Um, I can integrate the individual terms, but let's just go ahead and say that what they're looking for here is not the individual terms. Let's let's say that we, we're in search of the actual power series, all the terms. And so we integrate and we get x to the 3n plus 1 over 3n plus 1. That's, that's how we get that integral. Plus a c and um, you know, we can stop there. The plus c is fine. That's the antiderivative. You're asked to find the antiderivative. In antiderivatives, there are these plus c's. Okay, you could break the part the negative one over two and make it negative one to the n and put the two to the n and down there with this three to three n plus one. But pretty much at this point, you're done. You could put the five and the two in, but they're best left out. You're good to go. The task was to represent the function as a power series. You have it. It's an interesting question about what x is it converges for, but the question doesn't ask that. Let's go ahead and stop right here and we can move to the next example. It's an application question. When we were asked to find the sum early on, we said that really there's only two ways to find the sum if you had a geometric series or if you had a telescoping series. Well, now we can add a third way to find the sum now that we are introduced to power series. I've been asked to find this sum and I need to recognize basically that relying on my library of functions right now who, who only has a list of four, I need to see which of those series has been used and what is replacing the X. Hopefully the first thing you notice is the alternating uh, is the alternate is the denominator three, five, seven and the alternating sign. Of course, you see the root three over three in every term. I thought about trying to obscure that by taking all of those and breaking the exponents up. But but anyway, and and so it's the odd numbers underneath that that basically give it away. Dead giveaway arc tan of X. And uh, technically, actually, it converges for all x's, including minus 1 and 1. So technically, I can make those square brackets. Sorry about that. All right. What's the first few terms of that? It is x to start out. And then it's minus x cubed over 3 plus x fifth over 5 and on forever Come with that pattern. So it looks like we have the right hand side with the root three over three plugged in. Well, if you're gonna do it to the right hand side, you should do it to the left hand side. And that's it. Well, not quite that, one more thing. This is one of our unit circle angles. I know tan isn't on, you know, they're sine and cosine, but but um Hopefully you can have yourself a unit circle with tangent on there to help you be able to easily, easily recognize it. Um, this is the rationalized version. Uh, one over rad three might be one that you know. Um, the sine is one half and the rad three over two is the cosine, sine over cosine tangent. What angle has a sine of a half and a root three over two for the cosine? It's 30 degrees, pi over six. The sum of the series is pi over six. You can find the sum by figuring out which series it's been, um, which series of the of your known library functions that you uh, that, that that's been used and what's being plugged in. Uh, this sum came up in a previous class when we were looking at conditional convergence. This is the alternating harmonic: one minus a half plus a third minus a fourth plus a fifth. And we had said at the time that it's, you know, it's natural log of two. Now I'm going to show you why it's natural log of two. 
um, alternating every term underneath. It's it's going to be of our four guys. It's it's our natural log of one plus x. And technically, it converges at one. Is it? You know, it converges at negative one too. It's weak, weak. You know, conditional convergence. But I think it converges at negative one. Is oh wait, you know what? You don't want to use negative one because negative one into the function gives you natural log of zero, right? Okay, sorry about that. So um, yeah, so we're good. Replace the x's with ones, and you have the the question that's being asked. So do it on the other side as well, and you have the natural log of two. So now we have three guys on our list. If somebody asks you to find the sum, there's three options. It could be a geometric series, which we got to know what's going on with that. It could be a telescoping series, which we got to know what's going on with that. Or the third option now is it can be one of your functions that you know the power series for with a particular value of x that's in the interval of convergence plugged in. All right, this video is going past 10 minutes. Sorry about that. But um, this represents the end of the entire series on power series. Gosh, six, seven, eight videos. I'm not sure how many videos. But anyway, thank you for watching. And hopefully you got something out of it. If you have any questions, please comment down below or you could reach out to me. I'm here to help you through this. My name is Nakaya Rimmer. And uh, hopefully I'll see you in the next video. Take care. Thanks for watching.